Hey there, TJ this time, and I'll be talking to you about using animations in NativeScript apps. What you're looking at here is the NativeScript grocery sample, and you can see that it has a pretty decent design here, nice background. If I click on this login button, I see the full login form here, but there's a lot more that I could do with this app. One of the great things about building with NativeScript is that you're building a truly native iOS and Android application. And you have the ability to tie into the metal, tie into the power that iOS and Android offer in terms of rich animations. And the great thing about NativeScript is that it makes it really easy to tie into these iOS and Android APIs in simple JavaScript code. To show that, I'm going to add a few animations to this grocery sample here. I'll start by dragging over my code here that builds this app. And for now, I just want you to concentrate on this simple background element that I have here. Now in NativeScript, all these UI components uh, you see here, so grid layout, page, label, uh, everything in here really, all UI components, inherit from this single base class known as a view. So really all of these things are just views or subsets of views. And the simplest way to run an animation in a NativeScript app is to get a reference to one of these views and to call a NativeScript provided animate method. So let's switch over to my JavaScript code here. You can see that in the loaded event, which fires when this page actually loads up, I'm actually already getting a reference to a few of the views in the application. So the email field here, the password, and the submit button. So I'm going to start by typing in here, getting a reference to that background element that we looked at earlier. Remember, the ID is background here. Now, at this point, there are a number of different properties and methods that each of these views actually has. If you want to see this information on the docs, you could actually head over in the sidebar here, go to Modules API, UI, Core, View, uh, and you'll end up at this page here, which will walk you through all the various things that you can do with each of these views. But for today's purpose, we're actually interested in this animate function. So I'm going to head back here, call animate, type that type that correctly. Now there are several different things that you can pass animate and to head back to the docs there's actually a full page on animations in the sidebar here or docs.nativescript.org slash UI slash animation and it'll walk you through the various things that you can animate in NativeScript apps. You can see opacity, background color, translation scales, rotates, etc. In this case what I want to do with the background is I want to add a little parallax effect. So I'm going to take the image and go back to my XML here. And one of those properties that all views have is scale X and scale Y. So I'm going to say start with this image scaled way in. So I'll go to 1.6 here so that it appears, uh, appears really uh, big scaled in. And then I'll go over to my JavaScript code and say, actually, uh, when, this or when this page actually loads up, I'm going to change that scale to an X value of 1.2 and a Y value of 1.2. I can also control the duration. So I want my parallax effect to take a little while to play out. So I'm going to set that to eight seconds. From there, I'll head over to my terminal and I'm going to use the live sync command for Android to actually push these changes out to my Android emulator. And it is a load up here. Check out how the background now scales out, providing this really nice parallax effect when this app loads. Now, again, remind you just how easy this is. R remember that uh, this is just a simple call to animate. It's really all we need to do here. <laughs> Think about the amount of work it would be to do the equivalent sort of animation in a native iOS or a native Android app. But it gets a lot more powerful than this. Not all of your animations are just going to be simple things where you need to change one property. Sometimes you need to animate multiple things at a time, or you need some really fine-tune control over the animations that occur in your app, and NativeScript has APIs for that as well. So I mentioned that all of views have an animate method, but NativeScript also provides a full animation module that I'll bring in here from the UI animation module. To show this off in action, I'll refer back to the app for a moment. Notice how when I click this login button, uh, the transition there, the button suddenly disappears, and then the new container suddenly appears. This isn't bad, but we can use another one of the, the animations NativeScript provides for opacity to add a nice little fade in, fade out effect that will give the app a nice little touch. If I scroll down to the bottom here, the current code that handles this is in this function here. And you can see that it's fairly basic. It basically says take the initial container or that content that shows when the app loads. Go ahead and hide that by setting its visibility to collapse. 
and then take the main container, which is this white box here and show it. And also the logo, the fruit logo here and show that as well. Now I want to change this to, instead of just showing and hiding, to actually changing the opacity of these controls. And you can see that this is already a more complex problem. I have an order of execution here. I want to hide this initial content before I actually start animating in the content that leads behind it. And I also want to show these two controls or basically animate them onto the page at the same time. Now the first problem is the easier one to solve. I'll again use the animate method. So I'll take my initial container here. I'm gonna call that animate method again. I'll set the opacity of that initial container to zero and I'll provide the duration of half a second because that's not so bad. Now the one thing different I'm gonna do is this animate function here actually returns an ECMAScript 6 or ES 2015 promise, which means I can actually change the chain this call with a then handler. And I can say actually change the opacity of that initial control and then show and hide all of these containers. And I'll go ahead and save that and live sync this over so that we can see what this looks like. And you can see the parallax background is occurring in the background. And now when I click in, notice how that initial content faded out before the main container and the logo just sort of jumped into view. So the final change I want to make is instead of sort of jumping into to existence, which these containers do here, I want to change their opacity instead. So I'm going to go into my CSS code and I'll take these controls and you can see that they're hidden by default already. I want to change them to also be opaque by default as well. So now when I actually show these controls, the container and the logo, the user still won't see them because their opacity is set to zero. And this gives me the opportunity to actually animate these elements uh, onto the screen. Now the next challenge here is how to show these things at the exact same time or how to bring them into existence at the same time. And that's where this animation module that we looked at earlier comes into play. One of the things it lets you do, if I go back here, is define an array of animations that you want to run. So I'll define an empty array there. And what I'm going to do is push two different animations into that array. I give it a target, so both the main container and that logo there. Uh, and then the rest of what you pass looks basically identical to what you pass animate earlier. In this case, I'm saying change the opacity of each of these controls to one, or essentially sh make them show, and to do these also over a half second. From there, I can actually just call that animation API. I can just create a new animation, and I have to pass it the array of animations to run. Uh, the second parameter controls whether the animations should be sequential or not. So if I said I wanted these to be sequential, if I pass true, this animation would run, and then when it completed, this animation would run after that. Now in this case, I don't want that. I want these, these two animations to run simultaneously, so I pass false in there, and then I call the play method. And if I again live sync these change over, you can see have a parallax background here. And then while that's running, notice how many things I can run simultaneously. I click log in. You can see that that initial container fades out and the new form fades in. Again, small little tweaks we're making to this app, but you can see how much nicer these little polishes or these little changes can make this app look more professional. And with NativeScript, whether you're just calling the simple animate method or you're going to the more robust animation class, these APIs are still relatively simple and let you accomplish a whole lot. Now, if you want more details, uh, even with these APIs, I'm just scratching the surface of what the animation APIs can do. If you again head back to the animations doc, you'll see that things like this animation class are spelled out. In addition to a play method, you can also cancel animations. You can get callbacks for when these things are finished. You can control easing of how the animations play out. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that you can do. So I encourage you to head to the docs and play with animations in NativeScript apps.